Hey guys, uh, welcome back. Um, I've had a really eye-opening week to what's been happening in Cuba. And there's so much that can be said at this time. But um, if you have family in Cuba or you're from Cuba, I just want to say I am with you in solidarity. I'm praying for the freedom of the Cuban people. And I am appalled at the response of the United States at this time and, and the world in general. This is a, an issue that the whole world needs to be paying attention to. My prayers are with you. But right now, I specifically want to talk about the response from the BLM organization. And before I get into that, um, I'm just going to read what they're saying and then respond. But for me, this is the nail in the coffin. And it should be the nail in the coffin for a lot of other people. If you're still having doubts and debates about this thing, if it wasn't that Patrice Colors uh, is extra shady, if it's not that there's transparency with the ninety million, ninety million dollars that they got, and and the the lack of transparency is behind how they're spending that money, then this is the nail in the coffin. It's the nail in the coffin for me. I've definitely been off the train for a very long time. The moment people were, were prevented from discussing real solutions about police brutality and it was sort of engineered to go in a particular direction um, and to avoid any discussion of forgiveness and unity and actual reconciliation, I knew something was off. And it was because so many corporations, pretty much everything in the world was bowing down to BLM. It's not the easiest thing to say, like, I don't support BLM. So shout out to the people who've been alert to what's happening for a very long time. But here's the issue. BLM went on their Twitter to only condemn the United States, U.S. federal government's inhumane treatment of Cubans. So I'll read a little bit of their first paragraph and that's it. Black Lives Matter condemns the U.S. federal government's inhumane treatment of Cubans and urges it to immediately lift the economic embargo. This cruel and inhumane policy instituted with the explicit intention of destabilizing the country and undermining Cubans' right to choose their own government is at the heart of Cuba's current crisis, is it? Since 1962, the United States has forced pain and suffering on the people of Cuba by cutting off food, medicine, and supplies costing the tiny island nation an estimated $130 billion. So right off the bat, BLM is curving this to blame on the U.S. And that's not what the Cuban people have been chanting. That is not what they have been shouting for. They've been shouting for liberty, for freedom. They've been coming against the communist government of Cuba. They're living in luxury, the tourists... They get the best of the land, but the people in Cuba themselves, the Cubans, the people of color, they're suffering and you're ignoring that suffering because you don't even conceive and like the people behind BLM, the BLMers, BLM idolize communism so much more than the actual lives affected, the actual black and brown lives affected in Cuba. And if that isn't clear for people, it needs to get clear now. Black Lives Matter was never about Black Lives Mattering. It's always been about a cultural revolution. It's always been about bringing in Marxism and communism through the use of Black people dying. And if that doesn't sound cruel, disgusting, and evil to people right now, it's time to wake up and really understand. So I'll just continue on and shout out to uh, Politically Homeless Shelter on Instagram. Follow them at PH Shelter. Uh, next paragraph goes on to say, Without that money, it is harder for Cuba to acquire medical equipment needed to develop its own COVID-19 vaccines and equipment for food production. This comes in spite of the country's strong medical care and history of lending doctors and nurses to disasters around the world. Again, not this is not what people are protesting right now that not a not a mention about the internet blackouts no mention about the actual police brutality okay from blm is ever mentioned in this <laughs> let me just double check because from what i read it wasn't 
No, they don't mention the police brutality that's happening right now. People are being kidnapped. People are missing. Um, some people are even saying it's at the beginning of a genocide. And Black Lives Matter, Black at BLM does not actually care about the lives part. It's all about the fact that they cannot renounce a communist dictatorship. They cannot renounce a communist dictatorship. They talk about you pro CRT people are all about lived experience. Black Lives Matter operates on the foundation of lived experience. But here they are and they refuse to acknowledge the lived experience of these protesting Cubans. Do you get it? Like they don't care. This is BLM is a front. BLM is a front. It's a front. It's all about Mao's Red Book. It's all about a revolution in the United States to convert everything over to communism. It's, it no, it's no longer a conspiracy. Do the homework. They were telling uh, in 2016, there was a tweet where Black Lives Matter said, rest in power, Fidel, or something to that effect. They, they support these dictators. Patrice Colours, she looks up to all of these communist revolutionaries. And now we see people who have suffered, who have been under that dictatorship, under that oppression, friends. Oppression in its truest sense. Videos upon videos coming out of people being like shoved into trucks. And now apparently they're recruiting child soldiers. But the media in cahoots with BLM and so on and so forth. They just want to tell you one narrative that curves all around the fact that they don't want to denounce communism. And that should be an eye opener for everyone. And people are looking at this country for hope. And America is now a symbol of hope. So I hope people wake up. If the money and the finances of BLM, if the fact that they are not um, about their word didn't wake you up before, if the, the dots and the lines weren't adding up, weren't making a picture earlier then, hopefully this is causing some sort of a stir because this is an organization that just needs to go in the trash. Yeah. Pray for Cuba. Keep lifting up Cuba in prayer. Workshop ideas on how to help them out at this time. But I think use your voice right now in your platform. Share, share, share about what's happening in Cuba. Um, and I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.